All right, we are back. Today is the seventh, and today we're going over point slope form. So, can't really see it. The pink does not show up too well. Uh, let's see how the blue looks. So yesterday we did standard form, and we learned how to go from standard form to point uh, to slope intercept form. And today I'm going to give you point slope form equation. We're going to do kind of the same thing. So here we go. Let's see if it'll show up here. Point slope form is y minus. Yeah, it does not show up. Let's change. Let's not use that pink then. Y minus Y1 equals M parentheses X minus X1. And just like that, we're also going to be going from point slope to slope intercept form today. We're going to be putting everything into this equation right here. That's a big deal. What we're not going to ever do is go from point slope to standard or standard to point slope. That's never ever going to happen. They're always going to find their way to y equals mx plus b. That's what we're working on. Uh, and that's kind of home. Everything needs to find its way to slope intercept because then we'll always have the slope, the y intercept we can put in our calculators. There's lots we can do from here. So today we're going to be doing that. In the last video we did standard form and this video we're going to be doing just point slope form. So let's talk about what point slope form is and why it looks like that. So in point slope form I can give you just the slope and a point, and you can give me the equation. So I could say, uh, in an example, the slope is 4 and the point is 6 and 2. So I could say, what's the equation that has the slope 4 and a point 6 and 2? Well, that's my x1, that's my y1 right there. The, the one just is like a labeling. So let's go and plug them into this equation and see what we get. So we have y, that's going to say same y minus y1, which was 2. So y minus 2 equals, we have the slope, it was 4, 4, parentheses, x minus 6. Just like that. And that is point slope form. And just like I said, we are still going to be putting this into slope intercept form. So let's go ahead and put this in slope intercept form. It's fairly easy. Uh, we can start with the distribution. So then we would have y minus 2 equals 4x minus 24. And then we're going to add 2 to both sides to finish solving this. We'll add 2 to both sides. So y equals 4x minus 22, and that's it. So one of the great things here is that the slope in slope intercept form, these are still the same. Still the same. So let's do a couple more here. Let's see if I can just erase that. It's close enough. So here we go. The point, the point is going to be 10 and negative 4, and the slope is going to be negative 2. So let's go ahead and write out this equation. Most of it's going to stay the same. We have y minus negative 4. Oh, uh, that's not showing up. Let's not use that. I can only use a couple of these colors here y minus negative 4 equals negative 2 parentheses x minus 10. Now there's a couple of little housekeeping things we have to deal with and the first one is right here this negative and negative need to make a positive. Anytime you have negative and negative that's a positive so we have y plus 4 equals negative 2 times x minus 10. It's very important that we rewrite everything every time. Let's distribute. So y plus 4 equals negative 2x plus 20, because negative 2 times negative 10 is positive 20. And then we can finish this by moving that 4 over y equals negative 2x plus 16. Slope is 2, negative 2. And the y-intercept is 16. So I could also graph this kind of freehand here. Uh, I know it contains a point 10, negative 4. So that's going to be like right here, 10 over 4 down. And I also know the y-intercept is 16. So that's going to be up here. 
and a negative slope. So it's going to look kind of something like that. That's the freehand version of this graph where this point is 0 and 16. This point is 10 and negative 4. And we know the slope is negative 2. And we're not going to do graphing for all of them. Let's continue. See, racing this is half the fun. Man, I didn't know. My arm gets tired from having to hold it up like this. And my desk gets covered in this multicolored confetti because it's paint, so the paint dries and falls. And so all over my desk are these tiny little paint chips. Oh, I hit the brightness button. Why not? For your sake, I'll turn it up to, to, to this brightness. Do two more. Um, slope is one half. And we're going to use the point. I wonder if the purple shows up. No, it's still not showing up. What, the, what about the uh, blue? I think the blue actually shows up in this. Uh, we'll use the point negative four, negative eight. It shows up, but not, I want I want better. I don't want it to kind of show up. I want it to really show up. So we'll we'll just we'll just stick with this color. Uh, for negative eight, let's put this in here. We're gonna have y minus negative eight equals one half x minus four. Let's take care of that housekeeping. We do have these double negatives here. So we have y plus eight equals one half x minus four, and then we can distribute the one half. So we have y plus 8 equals 1 half x. And then 1 half times negative 4 is negative 2. And you can use a calculator to check that. Uh, but I do know that 1 half times negative 4 is negative 2. And then we're almost done. We just need to add or subtract the 8. Not add it, but subtract the 8 on both sides. So my final answer here is going to be y equals 1 half x minus 10. <coughs> The y-intercept here is negative 10. The slope is 1 half. Let's do one from your homework. For those of you who are still watching this right now, I do appreciate that. Let me look through your homework real quick. Let's find a uh, one that seems to be a little more difficult than the rest. I'll just do this one. There we go. So this one, I don't give you the point in the slope. I just give you the equation and I say which of these is it. So here we go. Y plus 5 equals negative 3x minus 6. And the question is, uh, put this in slope intercept form. Take it from this form and put it in Y equals mx plus b. Here we go. I'll start with that distribution. So we have Y plus 5. Nothing happens here, so I'm just going to write it down again. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. Negative 3 times negative 6 is positive 18. That's the bell. And then we just have one step remaining, and that is to subtract. I will not excuse the interruption. I'm in the middle class. Y equals negative 3x plus 12. Uh, no, not 12. 13. I'm, oof, not, I, need, I need some coffee. Not 12, but 13. There we go. And that's it. All right.